Hey guys, this is Brent with Western Equipment and I'm going to be showing you everything that you need to know about the 2021 John Deere S240, so let's get started. Let's talk a little bit about model number here. Now what we have is the S240. So this is going to be in the S200 class. Now within the S200 class, as of 2021, you're now gonna have two model options. One being the S240, which is gonna have the Kawasaki engine. And then new to 2021, you'll have an option for the S220, which has the Briggs and Stratton engine. Now the difference there is the Briggs and Stratton engine just gives you a little more economical choice price-wise, rather than going to the S240 with the Kawasaki. Now where the S240 is going to lie in the lineup of the John Deere mowers is right above the S100 series and right below the X300 series. So it's a great middle of the line residential mower. Now also within the S240, you're going to have two different size deck options. Here today, we're gonna to be looking at a 48 inch deck, but you also have the option of a 42 inch deck on these mowers. Now from here guys, let's go ahead and jump underneath the hood and look a little bit at the engine. So getting under the the hood here one thing I want to point out is just how easy it is to raise and lower this hood one thing that you'll notice on these mowers is that there is not a latching system there's no clips or anything that's gonna hold this hood down into place which is really nice making it easy and smooth to get underneath for service but one thing to keep in mind is is that since there is not a clip system on this hood is that whenever you're moving this mower putting it on a trailer or putting it in the back of your pickup you're gonna to want to make sure that you pull this mower on straight that way the wind is going over across the top of the hood from the front whereas if we were to back it on the wind could possibly catch this and bring this back and sling this and possibly tear your hood off so just make sure that you're aware of that whenever you do get into one of these mowers now guys since we're looking here at the engine first thing that i want to point out is that this is a 21 and a half horse engine now you'll notice here that it is labeled john deere but if we look over here on the side like we talked about it is a kawasaki and then also over here you'll notice that this is an fr651 so this is going to be Kawasaki's kind of middle of the line engine. This isn't going to be up in their commercial grade line and it's not going to be their lowest spec engine, but it's going to be the right size of engine for this size of tractor. So now from here, guys, let's go ahead and talk about a few of the service points. First one being here right on top, guys, is going to be our air filter system. Now, one thing that I like about this is that this is a little bit different from what we would see normally on these smaller tractors. A lot of times you have a couple of hand nuts here you have to undo to get to this air filter. But on the Kawasaki engine, you have the easy lift handle right there. And then to actually replace our filter, we'd have to undo our hand nut here on this clip, loosen that up, then we can raise the filter out, take it off and then replace it with the new one now next is going to be spark plugs now this is a v-twin engine so you are going to have two spark plugs so we have one over here on this side and then just remember that you will have another one over here on the corresponding side next is going to be our fuel filter now it is tucked back here behind the engine in between the engine and the battery so a little tough to get to but one thing that we need to keep in mind is that whenever we're trying to get to that fuel filter and also to our oil system over here is that we can remove this panel slide this up and get this out of the way to expose that and make it easier to get to our clips. So right there is where our fuel filter is going to be. Once you have that out of the way, very easy to change that just by removing the clip on top and bottom. Now next here talking about our oil system, first thing we point out is our oil fill right here on top. It's got a yellow cap, very easy to see. Now this is also going to be our dipstick. And one thing that you want to keep in mind here is that on the dipstick it tells you that for correct oil level, do not turn cap on threads. So whenever you're checking this oil level, we're going to pull the dipstick out, wipe it off, and then just simply set it down on the threads. We're not going to screw it in all the way. We're not going to screw it or turn it anyway. We're just going to set it down on, then pull it back out, check that level, and then make sure that we're within the right settings here. We have these bubbles here, these indicators. We just wanna make sure that we're in between our low and full and making sure that we're not over full. Now next here, we're gonna have our oil filter. As you can see, it's very conveniently placed here right next to our oil fill. So we make sure and know where that's at. Once again, guys, we've got that panel moved out of the way. So very easy to get in here with that filter wrench or strap wrench or whatever tool that you're going to use, but a very convenient position for that. And then lastly, we're going to have 
have our oil drain system here. Now, one thing that I like about this design is as you can see, it's poked out and away from the frame. That way we can get an oil pan underneath whenever we're doing those services by ourselves and doing those things at home. It will be over and out of the way so we're not making a mess all over our mower. And then also you can see here that it's meant to be open by hand. Now, if you can't open this by hand, you'll see here that there is this little square hole. A quarter inch ratchet will also open this up if you have problems by opening by that by hand. Now also guys, while we're underneath here, we'll also show you where the battery is, which is tucked right back here behind the engine. Now you'll notice here that it is held in by this strap. This is gonna be a nice feature just to make sure to keep that battery in place whenever we're driving, moving this mower, maybe we're going over those bumpy terrains. You do have that strap that holds that into place and it can be easily removed. It has a notch system right down there where you can pull that down, take that loose and either change our battery, maybe we need to charge it, or maybe we wanna do those things is add a trickle charger to this battery, but tucked right back here, nicely held in by this strap. Now, since we're talking about service points, one other thing that I always like to point out is that right underneath the hood here, when you pull this up, you are gonna have your service interval charts. Now, this is gonna show us such things as when to change the oil, when to lubricate those axle points, when to lubricate the places on our spindles and change our different filters and such. Now, this type of information can also be found in your operator manual, but for quick, easy maintenance to it right here, access to it, you have it right underneath the hood. So just remember that this sticker is right on board. So guys, just remember also, I've already done all videos on all of the services of this mower, a full complete engine service, also how to level the deck and to change the blades. So I'll make sure to leave those in the link in the description below. Before getting on the mower and talking about controls, let's talk about one of the most important parts of the mower as this is where we're going to be spending all our time, which is right here at the seat. Now, one thing that is nice about the S240s is that it is going to have the 15 inch back seat, which you do get in the S100 series and the X350s. But one thing that you have here is a super wide, very cushioned seat. You're also going to have this open back here to let that water run off and then also just act as a ventilation system for those hot days whenever you're out mowing. This is also going to be a weather resistant material so that is going to help whenever this does sit out in the sun or in that weather. But one thing that I would suggest guys is that if this mower is going to sit outside, a couple of things I would look into would be getting a seat cover for this just to help to preserve that seat and then also maybe a full mower cover just to help to preserve the life of that mower as we want to make sure and make these machines last as long as possible. Now another nice thing about this seat is it does flip up here and it is going to be able to be changed out so we are going to have these points here so if we needed to change this seat out that can be done and then you'll also notice which I'll show more about here in a minute is you do have a slide system on this seat where you can change how far this seat is forward or backward to fit those different operators. Now when getting on this mower one thing that's nice about the tractor style mower is that you can get on from either side and they're a little bit easier to get on than a zero turn since you're being able to get on on the side and having three points of contact meaning I can grab the seat the steering wheel and have a foot here on the platform and so that's a nice thing about these so if you are maybe that older person or somebody that has those mobility issues or maybe even a younger kid or just whatever these whoever these operators are going to be you do have a little easier way to get into the mower so now one thing also that I want to point out when getting on the mower is just how stable this mower is and part of that is is because our decking here is going to be a full solid metal deck now there's a lot of assumptions going around you know that people always throw out there that since the hoods here are made of this plastic poly material that so are the decks but as you can hear there guys that is going to be a full metal deck it is a full piece all the way back from the back fender to the front so very solid also to go along with the fully welded steel frame that's going to run all the way down to from the front to the back of the mower now let's go over the controls and we'll start over here on the left hand side of the mower now first is going to be our deck raise and lower now this is going to be a manual raise and lower and it is just going to be by hand but one thing about this raise and lower system is that it is spring assisted so one of the things and one of the fears oftentimes with buyers is am i going to be strong enough to do this raise and lower since it is manual but i can tell you that i would say even probably an eight to ten year old would be able to raise this up and down as with that spring assist it is very easy to get that up and down and into position now 
as far as cutting height that we have here, we are going to have quarter inch increments that range all the way from four inch down to one inch. So you do have multiple different heights that you will be able to cut out with this mower. Whether you like to cut short or cut high, you do have those options here. So next moving forward, we are going to have our brake here. Now this is going to act not only as more of an automotive style brake, but this is also going to be where our parking brake comes into play. So right now our parking brake is engaged. So if I want to disengage that, I'm going to push in and then right here on this button, I will push down and that will release the parking brake. And now whenever I'm driving this mower, I can be able to use this as more of that automotive style brake. And then if I'm wanting to set that parking brake, I'm just gonna push it back in, raise up on my lever, and then my mower is in park. So here we have our independent throttle and independent choke levers. Now this is going to be different from the 100 series where you have the single lever. And then below that, we're gonna have our RIO button. This is gonna be our rear implement option button, which is the button that we're gonna use to engage the mower to go into reverse. And I'll show you a little bit about how both of those two things operate here in just a minute. Now here in the middle at our hour meter, one thing that is going to be an upgrade here is we not only just have our hour meter, but as you see here, we do now have an electronic fuel gauge. So once you turn the mower on, it is going to turn that fuel gauge on. And as we can see here, we are blinking, which means that we do have that low fuel. This is gonna be a nice feature just to let you know, just like your automobile would, whenever that light comes on, letting you know that your fuel is low, your mower is gonna do the same thing here, right in front of you. On the right hand side at the key switch here, guys, pretty simple here. We have a stop position, a lights position, our run position, and our start position. Now, to be able to use these lights, what you're gonna to have to do is cycle all the way over to the run position or start and then cycle back to the lights position to be able to get those to turn on. Now I know a lot of times people think, oh, this is a silly feature, this is something that I'm not gonna use or those lights aren't bright enough to do anything with, but you do have that option of adding those in. And also keep in mind that you can change out those regular halogen lights for LEDs if you do need that extra light. So make sure to keep that in mind that you're not stuck with those plain Jane halogens, you can upgrade those to LEDs. Now next below that is gonna be our cruise control. Now, this is another feature that a lot of times people think is very silly on these mowers. But guys, I'm telling you that whenever you're running this mower and if you've got over an acre and you're making a lot of passes and you're not going to be doing a lot of tree dodging or going around, you know, winding areas, but you're making a lot of straight passes or a lot of circles, you will absolutely love this feature. So it's definitely not something silly. Think of it just like whenever we're driving on the highway in our vehicle and we don't want to leave our foot on the gas the whole time. Same thing here with this cruise control. Once we find that speed that we want to be at, we raise this up, it's going to lock this mower into place, and then we can just go ahead and drive and cut without having to add that fatigue of keeping our foot on those pedals the whole time. Now next to that is going to be our blade engagement. One thing that's nice here on the S240 is it is going to be an electronic blade engagement. So on some of the S100 series mowers, you're going to have that manual engagement here that you have a lever that we have to raise. But on the S240s, you are going to have this electronic system system to where whenever we start the blades, we raise that up and then to turn them off, we push it down. Now down here next and to the right, something very important is we do have our twin pedal system. The S240 is going to have that hydrostatic transmission, meaning that we are not going to have a gear system over here on the side. Once we start this mower up and we select our speed, we simply have a forward pedal and a reverse pedal, which makes operation of this mower super easy. So like I've said before, you know, if we have those people that are maybe inexperienced operators, or we have those younger children, maybe that's gonna be running this mower, very easy system, easy labeled pedals there for them to use. So from here, guys, I'll go ahead and start this mower up and we'll give a quick demo here of how to drive that and also how to use our RIO button. So what we're gonna do is have our throttle here about halfway and we'll go ahead and put our choke up. Go ahead and start this mower. Now, if you notice there, whenever I had the choke up, it wasn't wanting to start all the way, so you simply just start to lower that choke down, get that down to where it's going to start. And once it starts up, next thing that we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll reach over and we'll release our parking brake by pushing in, lowering down. Next, now whenever we're getting ready to cut, you are going to want to cut in full throttle, but to start those blades, it's best for your clutch to be here at this mid throttle position. So we'll go ahead and start these blades up. And then from there, whenever 
whenever I'm getting ready to cut, I would go ahead and raise my throttle all the way up. As we're, whenever we're cutting, we are gonna wanna cut at that full throttle position. So now from here, I can go ahead and drive forward. And then if I wanted to mow in reverse, I would push on my RIO button, start my reverse descent, and once I get started going in reverse, I can let off of that switch, then I can go back forward. Now, if I need to go back in reverse, and I forget to hit my RIO button, as you hear there, it went ahead and killed the blades. Now, it didn't kill the whole mower, but it did kill the blades. So now what I'm gonna have to do to re-engage those is turn them off here at the switch, idle back down here to mid throttle, and then I can turn those blades back on. And if I need to mow in reverse, I just have to remember to hit that button. So now to stop it, we'll go ahead and put our parking brake on, turn our blades off, throttle down, and then we can go ahead and kill that mower. So last few things here while we're on the right hand side, you are going to have a covered storage compartment here. Now this is gonna be a great little cubby hole for such things as our keys and our wallet, cell phone, whatever those things may be. And then also a lot of the time, this is where dealers are going to put your spare key. Now if you don't see this in your storage compartment, make sure to check in your operator manual to make sure that you have that spare key and make sure that you don't leave that dealership or that store without that spare key as that's very very important so we'll go ahead and put that back in there cover that up we're also going to have our beverage holder right back behind here so you can have a beverage on board with you so lastly is going to be right here we'll have our seat slide now this is going to be a great feature like we talked about a minute ago that gives you plenty of options here plenty of slide either backwards or forward to fit those different size operators now one of the things that we run into is with larger operators taller operators with larger legs longer legs is that sometimes they run into those instances where on Z zero turns, the handles are actually hitting them in the legs where they can't go all the way backwards. Well, as you can see here on this tractor style mower, you've got plenty of room where if your legs are longer or you are taller or that larger operator, you have plenty of room here in between you and the steering wheel. This is in the all the way back position here at the seat, but you could also slide this up to where you could fit those shorter operators, maybe those children, or just going to be those smaller operators to where they can reach those pedals and the steering wheel. So at the rear of the mower, guys, a few things here that we'll point out first thing is going to be that we do have a seat switch now this is going to be a safety system on this mower to make sure that there's an operator in the seat whenever you're running this mower so we just want to make sure that this is always attached now next we're going to have our seat suspension system here these are going to be rubber isolators that are replaceable if these do happen to wear out or give you any issue you can replace those Next is going to be our fuel opening here. So this is going to be an inch and three quarter opening with that tethered lid so we don't lose that. And you will have a fuel capacity of 2.4 gallons. Now typically what I've seen is that these mowers use about a gallon an hour. So with that being 2.4 gallons, you should be able to get a good two and a half hours of mowing out of this mower. So just keep that in mind when we're talking about fuel capacity. Now next is going to be our cargo mount system. Now this is the system that John Deere has for those attached attachments such things as baggers mount on sprayers and multiple other things and guys I've got a video where I highlighted my top 15 attachments for these riding tractor mowers that I'll make sure to leave in the description below but definitely check that out as that's one thing that's nice about these tractor style mowers is you have so many different options of attachments and things that you can add to them so I highly recommend checking that out now to go along with the rear cargo mount system here we're also going to have two points here at the front now these are mainly going to be used for a weather enclosure so you can put a full weather enclosure on these mowers to keep those elements off you maybe if you're using it to blow snow or you're working in really windy conditions you do have that option as well now moving down below talking about our cargo mount system another key element to that is going to be these notches here that are in our back frame so on certain things as like our bagger kit and a bucket holder you will be using these two these notches here to work with those certain attachments so just know that those are there next we're going to have our transaxle release lever so as we can see here on our sticker whenever this lever is pushed in we're in driving mode and when it's pulled out 
we're able to push this mower. Now what that does is that's just releasing those transaxles to where once we relieve our parking brake, have this pulled out, we're able to push this mower. Now I know oftentimes we get the question of why would I ever need to push this mower, but guys you may have those instances where maybe we run out of fuel or we have a mechanical issue or something happens or maybe we have this out in the middle of our yard and we need to move it and we can't drive it but just know that you have that lever you can release and then once you release that parking brake it makes it very easy to push this mower moving down the next thing here is going to be our rear hitch now we are talking about the attachability and all the different options a couple of things that you'll see in that top 15 attachments videos is how many of these rear attachments that we'll have that will use this hitch so we're going to have such things as poly carts or rear towable sprayers such things like that that will use this hitch so this is just another point that makes this mower super versatile lastly guys is going to be our transaxles now here on the s240s we are going to have the k46 transaxles these are going to be a cast aluminum transaxle this is also going to be the same transaxle that's used in the lower series of the x300 so it's going to be a nice in between it's not that lower end like you'd see in the s100 and it's not in the upper end of the x300 but it is going to be right in between and a very heavy duty transaxle for this size of tractor now here at the deck what we're going to see on this 48 inch deck is that you do have the 48 inch xl deep now this is going to be a stamped deck made out of a solid sheet of 10 gauge steel now whenever you move to the 42 inch deck in this s240 it's also going to be a stamped deck but it's going to be made out of 13 gauge steel so that is one of the upgrades when going to this 48 is you do get a heavier built deck with that 10 gauge and then like i said this is going to be a stamp steel deck so as you'll notice you have all rounded corners here we're not going to have any weld spots where this deck has been welded together and one thing that's nice about that is that you're creating more airflow and you're also creating less spots for debris and build up to build up inside that deck whenever we have those spots we have those welded corners on these fabricated decks things that we get is a lot of buildup of dirt grass and then moisture and then with that moisture is going to cause rust there at those weld points where we can see damage but by having this stamp steel deck you have that good airflow there's not those spots for things to stick and you're also going to be able to process that process that material and get that moved out of the deck quicker and faster than if you had those corners that were welded here on the sides so now some other things about this deck first thing we point out is that we do have these anti-scalping wheels that are adjustable it's also going to tell you here on the side of where you need to set these wheels based on what cutting height you're going to be at so for say if we're going to be cutting from three to four inches we need to move all of these wheels down to the bottom position two to three we need to be in this position so on and so forth and you're going to have these on all four corners of the deck now this is a very nice feature as we know that since we're getting up into that 48 and a little larger you're going to have a little more walk and wiggle with these decks whenever you're going over that uneven terrain so by having these anti-scalping wheels you can help to protect that yard with the addition of these wheels now another nice feature that you're going to have here on the XL Deep 48 is you are going to have this extra welded on rub rail here. This is just going to help to preserve the life of that deck. That way you're not using the rolled edge of that deck as that protection because with this side here we know that we're going to be going up against maybe curbs or concrete barriers. Maybe we have those flower beds in our yard that we may be going up against so you do have that extra reinforcement and protection here on the side. Now next and this is one feature that often gets overlooked and probably gets underused by most people is going to be our washout port. Now what this is is this is going to be a cleaning system on this deck to where we can hook up our water hose, get this mower over onto a asphalt or concrete surface, make sure to raise these gauge wheels all the way up so we can set that deck all the way down on the ground, <clears throat> hook our water hose up, turn that water on, and then turn our blades on. And what that's going to do is put that water underneath the deck, circulate it with those blades, Blades, churn that water and help to clean and keep the underneath of our deck clean now I would only suggest doing this once a year unless you have those applications where you're mowing a lot of wet grass or you're seeing a lot of buildup underneath the deck then you may want to use this more often but once a year maybe at the end of the season be a great time to use this to get this good and clean before we put it up for the winter because one thing about 
to the decks is that we always want to use less water and more air so we avoid those things such as rust and deterioration. So since we're talking about that, right here at our flip up spindle covers, which are nice because we can open these up and be able to blow out any material that gets built up here. But one thing that you'll notice is even here on the spindle covers, it says no water use air so like i said guys the less water that we can use on these decks and on these mowers the less deterioration the less chance for rust and things that we're going to have so just make sure to keep that in mind now also here on our flip up spindle covers you're going to see this grease emblem here with an arrow so if we raise that up you will see that we have that grease point right underneath now you are going to have grease points on all three of your spindles and on this 48 inch deck you will have three spindles and three blades so we need to be making sure that we're taking care of those because greasing these spindles is going to help increase the life of this mower over here on the right hand side just a couple of things first off we are going to have this flip up chute here now this is going to be nice because it is spring loaded so that if you are going to be putting this into a shop or maybe into your garage and you need that extra space you can flip this up and get out of the way but it's going to be spring loaded that way to make sure and keep it down and if we run over any debris that happens to flip this up it will stay down to make sure that it's keeping that grass off and away from you also we're going to have like i said on the other side we do have our two anti-scalping wheels we just want to make sure that when we're adjusting those on one side that we are adjusting those on the other to match to make sure that we are getting that maximum protection and then we also have our flip up spindle cover on this side once again guys we want to make sure and keep these cleaned out after every time we mow but we do want to use that air instead of water and then also we are going to have that grease point that's very easy to get to here on the side and we need to make sure that like i said we're keeping all three of these spindles greased as it's very important to the life of this deck that we do that now one other thing about these decks and it doesn't matter where you buy it from whether we buy this from a dealership or a box store if we're spending two thousand dollars or fifteen thousand dollars one thing that we always need to check is to make sure that the deck is level one big misassumption that happens all the time is that these decks are coming from these places from these stores and dealerships and the mower is ready to go and they should be but guys I've seen it way too often that these mowers people will get them home they'll be unhappy with the cut they'll see unlevel cut and it's because these mower decks have not been leveled so I've had done plenty of videos on how to do this process I'll make sure to leave those in the link in the description below but always make sure to check that out before you go to mow with this for the first time here at the front just a couple of things first off guys is that you are going to have this standard standard front bumper on this S240. Very nice feature. Not only does it add to the looks of the front of this mower, but it's also going to be very functional as you don't want to make you don't want to damage the front of this mower here. So this bumper will keep you from doing that. So that is a really nice feature there. Now we talked about on the deck about making sure and greasing those spindles, but here at the front we're also going to have three grease points and they will be one right here on our axle out by our wheel. We'll have one right here in the middle, and then we'll have another over there on our the other side on our axle right there at our wheel spindle. Now, one thing I wanna point out about these front axles is, is that they are cast iron. So this is a really nice feature is how we see on a lot of different mowers, a lot of other brands, is that on this size of mower, the smaller residential mowers, you'll see just a regular bar style axle. Well, one thing about this is, is that this adds so much strength to the front of this mower as we know that when we're in those uneven yards or in that bumpy terrain, the brunt of your force is going to happen right here at the front. So having that reinforced cast iron front axle is a great addition that John Deere has. Let's talk a little bit about dimensions as these are gonna be very important whenever we're talking about storing this mower, whether we're putting it in a shed or in our garage or in a barn. All these things are things we need to know about this mower so we make sure that it fits. So first off, we're going to be 75 inches from the front to the rear and at our highest point we're going to be 45 inches tall now the big one is going to be width now with the 48 inch deck you're going to be 63 inches wide with the chute flipped down now if we were to flip this up we can get down 
to 53 inches so that is going to make a big difference there whenever we're talking getting in and out of a spot now a lot of people have this assumption that if I have a 48 inch deck and I take the chute cover off I should be at 48 inches but that isn't correct whenever you go in and you think about the extra add-on on the side there with that weld mounted frame and there's going to be a little extra add-on here where our blades aren't coming all the way out to the side so you're cutting width is 48 but your overall width of this deck will be 53 without the chute and 63 with the chute now as far as overall weight you're looking at 522 pounds so this is going to be an ideal weight a little heavier mower to give you a little more stability when using this mower so one thing that we do get asked on these is that what is our top speed whenever we're mowing now I've got a lot of videos out there of doing mow an acre series on these videos so I'll also post those in the description below where you can see that but the top speed on this mower is going to be five and a half miles an hour going forward and 3.2 mile an hour in reverse so I hope this video helped you out and if it did we just ask that you'd hit that like button and subscribe to our channel also guys if you have any John Deere parts needs make sure to check us out at 247parts.com I'll leave that link in the description below and as always guys thanks for watching we'll see you next time I'm gonna have to really tough it out and go no hoodie yeah I might be able to cut glass right now Mm. Mm -hmm. Jimmy liked that uh, being, being in that blooper. <laughs> he enjoyed that show. He did. Yeah, he did. I'm glad. Over Here's there. the main show right here. Hey! The show right here, baby. That's the big show right yeah. there. It's my table, man. Sorry, man. <sighs> These shop guys, I think they run stuff. They kind of do. <laughs> I guess that's true. <laughs> they actually work for a living. What are you doing? <laughs> This is why film guy does what film guy does. Film guys like to have fun too. Oh geez, it's gonna be a long day. Hey, how do I turn it off? Figure it out. We'll go ahead and show how that works. Very easy lever to find, very easy to raise that up. And then we can scoot this seat forward. Yeah! We can scoot this seat forward. Push it, push it. <laughs> seat slide is not working are you holding it hey guys make sure to check out this cool video and this one buy your parts right up here and subscribe right here